Hello everyone and welcome to another game from uh, Grand Chess Tours, your next move tournament in Leuven. It's a rapid tournament, the players are uh, battling it out for a prize fund of $150,000. Uh, first place being, I believe, some $40,000, maybe a bit less. So definitely a lot of money and it's very interesting uh, to win, you know, every leg of the Grand Chess Tour. So you can be uh, the winner of uh, the Grand Chess Tour in total. Uh, here we have a game between Vishwanathan Anand and Fabiano Caruana. So the World Chess Championship challenger faces the wor former world champion, uh, but also the reigning champion in, in Rapid Chess. As you know, in 2017, Anand won the World Rapid Chess Championship. So a very interesting matchup. And uh, since, uh, if you've seen in my previous video, uh, Corona didn't have the best start in day one, uh, only half a point out of three games. So in this game, uh, to Anand's e4, he replies not with e5, so he doesn't go for his Petrov defense, rather he goes for the Sicilian. So uh, we're gonna check it out, but uh, before that, uh, I did prepare another photo challenge. I uh, hope it will be, uh, you know, sufficiently difficult, uh, not too difficult. Uh, so best of luck to everyone. Who is this very nice gentleman? So there you have it. Uh, for those of you who may not know this, uh, I will give you uh, only a slight hint. He did uh, win second place in the 1959 Candidates Tournament. Uh, of course, you all know who won first place. I'm not even going to say it. So uh, there you have it. Best of luck to everyone. And I don't have a photo of this uh, encounter, but I did have. I, I do have a print screen of from the live feed. Uh, if you want, uh, you can uh, check out uh, the live coverage. It's uh, you know uh, being uh, held every day and enjoy some live commentary by Yasser Serevan and uh, Jovan Kahouška. So, uh, that being said, let's check out this game. Uh, I really enjoy this game. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, it's really like uh, a school example of how, uh, of how to win games. Uh, I'm not saying that there will be a winner in this game, but, uh, you know, uh, y you'll see what I mean. Uh, so, Anand opens with e4. Uh, c5, like we said, the Sicilian defense, knight to f3, e6, d4, c captures, knight captures, and now a6, the Khan variation of the Sicilian. Uh, bishop to d3, bishop to c5, knight to b3, attacking the bishop on c5, uh, bishop uh, is tucked in safely to a7, uh, queen to e2, uh, knight to c6, simply developing, bishop to e3, uh, knight g7, knight 1 to d2, castles, castles, and knight to e5 now. Uh, bishop captures on a7, rook captures on a7, and f4. Uh, so, uh, all in all, attacking the knight on e5, and uh, this uh, awkward position of the rook on a7 will be used by Anand later on uh, to remaneuver his queen to wherever the queen uh, needs to go. Uh, knight captures on d3, c captures on d3, and a5 now. So, as you can see, uh, unlike... Uh, Unlike in the usual Sicilian, uh, it's actually white here who has a very strong center. Uh, so, queen to f2, now remaneuvering the queen by attacking the rook on a7, rook to a6, and now knight to d4. Uh, d6, rook a to c1, bishop to d7, and now knight to c4, uh, attacking that d6 pawn. Sorry about that. Uh, b5, uh, we have knight to e3, and queen to b6 now, again attacking the knight on d4. Uh, knight to f3, rook a to a8, uh, knight to c2, and now queen captures on f2, uh, accepting the trade of queens. Uh, king, uh, king captures, and now rook f to c8. Uh, we have knight c to d4, now offering a trade of rooks. Uh, b4, uh, king to e3, now you can see that uh, if uh, you know uh, both rooks get exchanged and even the pieces get exchanged, then you can see that Anand has a much more active king. His king is already on e3 and Caruana's king is uh, all the way on g8. Uh, f6, uh, we have knight back to e2. Uh, e5 now and rook captures on c8. Rook captures and rook to c1. Uh, bishop to e6, attacking the a2 pawn. Rook captures with check, knight captures and b3. Uh, and here we have knight to b6. Uh, if you look at this position, uh, the, the material is equal, uh, both players have two pawn islands, uh, the one difference that is very noticeable, uh, Anand has two knights and he's playing against a, a Corona's bishop and a knight. So a bishop will uh, usually be a better than a knight, but it all depends on the pawn structure in the endgame. And here you, you can see that uh, all of Anand's pawns are in dark squares, which makes his bishop uh, a good bishop. Uh, but still, uh, it's uh, not the kind of position where this bishop will be better than a knight. So a bishop to g4 here 
uh, with you know uh, he can always exchange it for either of these knights it would be it would be a very nice move for for black for example uh, but after b3 knight to b6 by caruana uh, we have d4 e captures an f4 with check knight captures attacking the bishop bishop to d7 and d5 now uh, we have f5 attacking the e4 pawn uh, knight to d4 and now uh, f captures an e4 king captures an e4 and now king to f7 uh, we have knight to c6 and here king to f6 is played uh, if you play something like a4 uh, with the idea that you don't want to give up the a5 pawn uh, then still knight will capture it you will only give up the pawn in, in a different way uh, so after this knight to c6 uh, king to f6 was played uh, here we have knight captures on a5 bishop to f5 check and uh, here you see the problem uh, but uh, to really understand this problem uh, we have to go all the way back here uh, so here king to f6 was played with the idea of uh, after white captures on a5 uh, bishop to f5 is the idea then bishop to b1 and going after the a2 pawn and uh, Caruana's idea is king to f6 so the king can support the bishop the bishop, bishop's idea coming to f5 uh, but this is actually the losing move for black but it's so hard to find out why this is the losing move uh, that uh, uh, then, uh, when you see why this is losing move, then you will see that g6 is in fact the correct way to go. Uh, also, the idea is the same, you prepare bishop to f5. Uh, but after king to f6, uh, Anand did capture the pawn on a5. We have bishop to f5 check, and now king to d4, uh, getting out of check. Bishop to b1, attacking the a2 pawn, and this is uh, where Anand could have uh, won the game immediately, but uh, he played knight to e2. And this is the problem. Uh, why king to f6 was the blunder uh, because knight to h5 is actually the winning move uh, I told you the winning move uh, I do want you to pause the video and uh, <laughs> figure out why but it's so hard to figure out why this is the winning move I will tell you the first move and then uh, you try to figure out why it's winning so feel free to pause the video here and you know I, this is really difficult so you know don't uh, if you can spare time, you know, do try and figure it out. If you can't, then uh, just enjoy the show I, uh, like I did. You know, I, I really enjoyed the show. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I will give it a couple of seconds for you to decide. Uh, so, for those of you who found why knight to h5 is the winning move, uh, you are, you know, there's like, uh, I, I, I have no words. You are su such an amazing player. And for those of you who, uh, in this case, like me, just want to enjoy the show, knight to h5 is winning uh, because, okay, the king is in check. The g7 pawn is under attack, and uh, you have to protect the g7 pawn. You can either protect it with knight g6 or knight, uh, king, king uh, g6 or king f7. It doesn't matter what you play. Uh, for example, king to f7. Now you play knight to g3. And why knight to g3 is such a strong move? Uh, <clears throat> you see only after you capture the pawn. Uh, bishop captures and now comes knight to e4 uh, you're attacking the d6 pawn uh, you can you can't allow white to capture this if white captures on d6 uh, then king can come to c5 the b4 pawn is uh, going and then it's a completely winning position so you do have to defend the d6 pawn you can either defend it with king to e7 or knight to c8 it doesn't matter w whatever you play uh, you have to defend it and then comes knight to d2 and this is the whole point uh, of this knight to h5 check uh, the bishop is now trapped the bishop can't retreat and uh, the bishop is completely out of the game uh, and if white wants white can either simply cap uh, go here capture the bishop and then continue playing the game uh, but either way uh, black is lost here uh, of course such a such a maneuver would be impossible to find in a rapid game but uh, uh, it's one of the reasons uh, I, I decided to show this game so a very nice variation and uh, you know a special congratulations to everyone uh, who who found the idea behind knight to h5. Uh, but okay, uh, knight to e2 by Anand. Uh, Anand goes uh, for a different line. We have a bishop captures and now knight to c1. Uh, he defends the b3 pawn this way, so the knight from a5 can now move. Uh, bishop to b1 uh, as the bishop was attacked on a2. Uh, knight to c6 and now h5. Knight captures on b4, so grabbing a pawn here. Uh, g5 and now knight to e2 we have knight to d7 knight to c3 now uh, bishop back to f5 and now knight to c6 uh, g4 uh, b4 is coming now uh, uh, anand starts pushing his past b pawn 
Uh, we have h4, uh, knight comes to b5, attacking the d6 pawn, and there's uh, no good way to defend the pawn, as uh, the, the knight and pawn are creating a wall against the black king. So, knight to e5. Uh, we have knight captures, pawn captures with check, and king to c5. Now the king will support uh, the pushing of the passed b pawn as well as the passed d pawn. Uh, bishop to d3. Uh, we have knight to c3. Uh, he doesn't allow bishop captures as he wants the knight to be able to, uh, to stop some of the pawns on the king side. g3. H captures on g3. g3 is a very nice move because it fixes the g2 pawn on the light square so the, the bishop will be able to attack it later on. Uh, we have pawn captures, pawn captures, and now d6. Uh, bishop to f1, attacking the g2 pawn, and now king to c6. Anand allows bishop captures on g2, uh, because now the d6 pawn is completely winning. <clears throat> uh, bishop captures on g2, uh, we have king to c7, and now bishop to h3. Preventing this push, and uh, you could push this and you would win a bishop, but then you have a problem with the g pawn. Uh, so first, knight to e4 check, king moves, and now knight captures on g3, getting rid of the passed g pawn. Uh, king moves, knight e2 check, king moves, and knight to g1. Uh, we have bishop to g4, and here uh, b5 was played, and it was in this position that uh, Fabiano Caruana uh, resigned the game. Uh, there is nothing to do here for black. Uh, after you attack the knight, white will simply ignore you, and after you capture it, uh, the queen comes into the game and it's all over. Black has uh, no counter counterplay whatsoever. So yeah, after b5, Karana resigned the game and a very nice uh, victory for the reigning world rapid champion Vishwanathan Anand. Uh, will definitely uh, have to wait and see how he does in this rapid event. But uh, lately, uh, pretty much every tournament Anand played uh, was, you know, he he really really had. Uh, well, he was placed well in the final standings and you know uh, he really did well in every tournament and it, it, uh, you know a lot of people missed him in uh, the 2018 uh, uh, candidates tournament but yeah uh, we'll see how it goes uh, I do hope you enjoyed this game and uh, once again uh, special crazy congratulations to anyone who who saw why knight to h5 was winning so yeah uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, probably with uh, one more game from round six uh, of this uh, nice rapid tournament, and then we're going to check out the standings uh, after round six. So, yeah, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.